images have produced some really puzzling features um, that, that's gotten the team and I think um, many people very excited. The, the video that we just watched or that news broadcast was actually disinformation about the planet Ceres. These scientists well know at this point, which is much exploration that we've done through our solar system, that there is structures on almost every planet and moon in our solar system, and that also includes comets and asteroids. So... In part one of You Were Not Told the Truth about the Dwarf Planet series, I proved that Akakator Crater was once a glass dome. And then, of course, over the millions of years, it's collapsed. And those bright spots uh, in that crater was actually some of the glass that covered that glass dome. So now we're going to take a look at Ahaluda Mons, which scientists in the beginning said it was a mountain. Now they're saying that it was caused by an ice volcano where the water underneath the surface mixed with salt and mud erupted to the surface and then froze. Of course, that's this information too. So we're going to take a close look at this. In this foggy area here, like some of the foggy areas on the lunar surface, this is glass. So I'm going to clean it up. And there it is. A little or somewhat more clear we can see down into it. These lines are part of the structure to build this elongated glass dome with. Now, the question is, is this the only elongated glass dome in our solar system? And it's not. Actually, there is a lot of elongated glass domes on the lunar surface. And so I provided them to, so we can take a look at it. Okay, here it is. It's almost the same engineering and construction. And also in this glass dome, it too has started deteriorating in the center. So I went through, I colorized it. And the reason I colorized it is so you can see, see these lines again. This is the structure that supported the framework for the glass that sealed off of this area. Now I'm going to return to uh, the image that I cleaned up. And before we go any further, we're going to look at the structure part of this glass dome. And here it is. It's A-frame. And these pieces coming from it was part of the A-frame. Of course, the top has collapsed, and you don't get this peak of the A-frame but this is actually what the center of this glass dome looked like. Now, this should look familiar because when I did a series uh, on Antarctica, we found out that the trans-Antarctic mountains were actually not mountains, but megalithic stone structures. And of course, over the millions of years, those structures had collapsed, and now they look like newly formed mountains. And the reason I bring that up, if you go back and look at the images of the Trans-Antarctic Mountains, they all have this A-frame shape to them all through that region. So the builders are the same.
Now as we get closer, you can see inside this facility, in fact, some of the, the light, you can see it right in this area inside this glass structure. Now you can see through this glass and you see part of the, or you can see some of the structure that they used to build this, uh, this glass down with. You can see through it, um, through this glass. Now, the reason we can't see it real clear is because over the millions of years, uh, there's a lot of dust on this glass and plus the amount of ossification that was done to these images we're never gonna get a really clear image of what's inside of it, but you definitely can tell that you can see into it. And in fact, if, if it um, was ice with mud and salt, you wouldn't be able to see through it at all. Here's a different perspective of that mountain. And as you notice this area here, is foggy. That's because uh, the ossification that they did, they had to do it like this because there's structures all over Ceres, and this blots out the biggest portion of them that are located around this glass dome area. This image, I'm going to push it back. This is actually what the surface looks like. This is how it looks. It's covered with structures. I know the image is, is really bad, but the ossification was uh, at a point where you really couldn't hardly even dig through it to pull these images, but I was able to get this one fairly decent. Here's one of the structures here. It branches off. I want you to check out this structure. It comes right out of the ground because this structure over here is uh, 13,000 feet. This structure coming on the ground has got to be at least 2,000 feet tall. Then if you look in the background, you can see some of the remaining structures that are still standing. A lot of it's deteriorated, but you can see them in the background. Okay, here's a different angle. This is the area that we looked at earlier. And now I'm gonna bring, this is uh, the structures. Of course, a lot of them have deteriorated, but here are some that's left and it goes all the way through here. And then most of the standing structures are concentrated in this area. So I'm gonna take us there. And now you can see them. Through here, you can see this structure, standing the one that we looked at a while ago and then you can see all the 90 degrees in it, and then you can see this uh, triangle-shaped structure in this area. Unfortunately, this is where we're at with the information that we get. Uh, we pay billions of dollars for these, or pay into billions of dollars for these programs to get scientific information, and then all we get in return is disinformation. Hopefully one day that will change. Now, who built the structures? Uh, everybody has their opinions, which is okay. Uh, I still stand that the Anunnaki colonized our solar system and they built these structures and that we as a people, our human race, were once slaves to the Anunnaki. Okay, everyone, I appreciate you watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. That helps support my channel. Until the next video, this is Tony with Earth Files Earth History signing out.